Hey guys, Alex Bacini, MTG Lion enemy number one, has been banned for life. Today is a glorious day. He has been banned for life today, January 7th, 2019. He has a lifetime ban. Very few people have this lifetime ban and he received it for cheating multiple times. Would I be surprised if he cheated again? And this is why he has the lifetime ban? No. He's been banned two times already. This would be his third time. And he has continued to cheat. The guy has the audacity to train judges at a conference how to catch cheaters. Well, I guess they, he trained them too well. Because they caught him. Now, I don't know the exact details, nor does it matter, but we can assume that he cheated. Now, for all of those people who said, I believe cheaters can change. I believe predators can change. I want you to take this case example. Uh, he can no longer play Magic. He has the same lifetime ban as MTG Headquarters. He can no longer play MTG Arena. If they find that he's playing Magic or competitive Magic at all, goodbye. Goodbye. And as MTG Arena becomes more and more competitive, he's not going to be able to play at those levels. And that's the irony. Less than two weeks after giving a presentation at a judge conference about how to catch cheaters, he was banned for life. I made many videos about him, and I finally achieved the objective. I guess we can turn all of our attention to the Wedgenator. The Wedge Baconator. Because now we don't need to focus on Alex. He's done. Finny. And I have to pat myself on the back. And a lot of you guys will say, oh, no, Tony. Tony, that's my actual real name. MTG Lion is being a troll. and He's being a hater. And he's da, 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 this. Guys, he stole money from other Magic players consistently. At high levels, if it's a power nine or ten thousand dollars, he's still at those levels. Those are not free money. That money comes from entry fees. And even the first player he cheats again, even if it's round one, it upsets the entire balance and legitimacy of that entire event. Because that's how matching works. Something small may have a big impact later. So uh, back to why Alex, uh, why we should celebrate this glorious day uh, to finally, you know, I said a long time ago, I would eventually celebrate Puka Trey dying and a monthly magic box dying. And I did. I did. To the point that a lot of you are upset. Why do we have another Puka video? We know it's a Ponzi scheme. No, you guys blanking did not know it's a Ponzi scheme because you all signed up for it on a Wedge Baconator web uh, sign in log logo login. No, you guys didn't believe the monthly magic box was a scam because when Tolarian, Tolarian made video after video telling to buy it, you bought it. How do I know? Because he posted on a Facebook telling me, telling us that he was suspicious whether or not these packages were being sent because a lot of his subscribers are private messaging him and telling him that they are not receiving packages. They're being double charged, overcharged, or being charged for six months when they signed up for one month. The dude was running it from jail. I mean, what else do you want me to say? So before you guys act like you knew that Alex would be banned for life for cheating, you guys didn't. You did not. And one of the worst things a YouTuber can do is be mad at his subscribers. But my subscribers are pretty loyal. This video is for all those people who supported Alex. And I know. I know that uh, they subscribe to the channel, although they don't like the channel, because when I post a video, I'll get 15 dislikes. before the If the video is 10 minutes, in the first 5 minutes, I'll get 15 dislikes. You clearly didn't even watch the video. So I'm going to go on a rampage right now, because I won out. I won out. I won against Pico Trade. I won against the Monthly Magic Box. And I won against Alex. Alex was heavily supported by the community. You don't understand what I was against. So I'll be point blank. His girlfriend, or fiance, I don't know what their relationship is, Rachel. Rachel is heavily involved in the magic community. 
So he's been promoted by Wizards of the Coast pretty much every week. So he's a, quote, female, quote, magic player. And, I mean, she has represented the Vintage League and all of this stuff. And sponsored by Puka Trade, nonetheless, right? Vintage League. Great sponsor, by the way. And so he's enjoyed the security of, essentially, he would not be banned for life. He must have done something pretty bad. Um, now, what do I think it was? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it involved cheating, which is ironic because now he's giving conferences on how to do catch cheaters. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about let's talk about this for a moment. And why this is so accepted in our community when it's not accepted in the poker community, it's not accepted in chess, it's not accepted in any other community. Cycling, right, with Lance Armstrong, it's not acceptable. When did, when's the last time someone's in a sport or in an activity, someone was banned two times? Banned two times, and then returned a third time, and then they receive a lifetime ban. When you have a unsleeved media who spends his own money, who doesn't play professional magic, who's probably not cheated anyone playing magic, and he gets banned for a meme. When Travis Wu gets banned, luckily he's back, I don't want to involve him too much, for being a moderator of a group that memed about someone who was not Emma, and then Emma took it, and then now she's a Wizard of the Coast like, official employee. I guarantee you that Hasbro, in my experience, when I was dealing with the Chinese counterfeits, the legal counsel of, and she was the legal counsel of Wizard of the Coast, was not great. I don't want to say incompetent, but it was not great. And she actually didn't understand Magic the Gathering, nor did she care about it. She didn't really understand why counterfeits were dangerous to her game. She didn't understand where they were coming from, although I specifically told her. I mean, I have emails back and forth to her, and if I revealed them, you would be like, wow, this is person is a legal counsel? Or... What happened was, she was very frustrating. She called me at work two times, left messages from my secretary two times, talking about a copyright issue. Now, I make websites, I do marketing, so I assume that this might have affected some client because she, when she left the message, she didn't say who the, who she was. She just gave her name and then that she was legal counsel of some company. So I was like, oh, crap, we're going to get sued by somebody. But it turned out she just wanted more information, but the information she wanted was completely irrelevant. Like, it didn't make any sense. So what happened was... She wasn't very good at her job, in my opinion, and then they had to give it to Hasbro Legal, which actually is located in Houston. So they outsourced their legal whenever they're really in trouble to a guy in Houston whose name I'm not going to mention, but he's a really nice guy. We talked on the phone several times. We emailed several times. Very professional. He was like, let's go out, get drinks. Let's get dinner. I'll treat you to dinner and drinks, and we'll talk about this. I want to know more. Um, he, he, his only understanding of this from Hasbro was Star Wars. So he was handling Star Wars licensing cases and Chinese counterfeits of Star Wars uh, merchandise. So he kind of knew it, but he kind of didn't. And he wanted to learn more about magic. Eventually, these people, the, you know, Wizard of Coast will, these people who exist, like Mero and the Emmas, and it's all about money, right? How many people would go see Emma? How many people would go see Wedge? I don't know. I don't have the data on that, but I personally would not, right? A lot of the personalities that are being promoted, including Alex Bracini and his girlfriend, are toxic. But they're so entwined in the community that if you were to speak out against Alex, it would be bad for you. It would be bad for you. What if I told you Rudy had dinner with Alex? And Alex is actually in one of Rudy's videos. Rudy's a smart guy. He knows who Alex is. There's no way no one knows who Alex is. He's a smart guy. That's the Alex. That's how much hold Alex has over the community. That he can get dinner with 
one of the fastest growing YouTubers, the fastest growing MTG YouTuber at the time. If he wanted to have dinner, this is Alex in a clown hat and a clown hair with Rudy and his girlfriend. If he wanted to have dinner with any MTG employee, any MTG content creator, he can. Because they're all viable. And I think that's very sad. Um, I treat this as a hobby. And it's not against Rudy. I, like, Forget that. It's just an example. If he wanted to have lunch with Tolarian, Tolarian say, oh, thank you, Alex. I would be more than happy to use my Patreon donations to take you to lunch. The wedge, wedge, jump on an airplane, make a transatlantic flight to meet this guy. Alex, you support cheaters once, you support cheaters forever. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Again, I'm going to tell my favorite story, and this story has been true. I've owned businesses. I've been part of large corporations before. There is a grocery store, and the owner is this elderly man, and he catches an employee who's been a single mom employee who's been working for him for 10 years, and he knows that her situation is very difficult, and he catches her stealing money from the cash tills. He confronts her she admits that she stole and she said this is her first time stealing so he goes home he says okay well i trust you you've been a good, good employee for 10 years he goes home to his wife and he explains the situation to his wife his wife says you must fire her you must um and he asks why you know she's been such a great employee for 10 years and her wife says his wife says this is the first time you caught her stealing, but that does not mean it's the first time she stole. Just because you catch a person cheating once doesn't mean that he only cheated once. Just because you catch a person cheating three times does not mean he only cheated three times. For every time you catch someone doing an act, maybe a predatory behavior like a MTG judge, They've done this predatory behavior dozens, if not hundreds of times before. Just because you catch them once does not mean that was the only time they did it. And the victims of this, just like Bernie Madoff's victims, they never come forward. And the victims from cheating, uh, for instance, the Dan video, watching a video of him playing a guy who cheated him of a top eight position, he goes ahead and defends Dan. With every iota that he has, he says Dan is a nice guy. Just like Alex is a nice guy. He says Dan would never cheat him. He says Dan just made an intentional mistake. Instead of reporting him and taking the action that the guy needed to, he didn't do anything. He defended Dan, and I think because of that defense, Dan was not banned. Well, eight months later, when Dan is part of a team with Craig Wesco, very famous Magic player, he gets his whole team banned because he gets caught cheating. That could have been prevented early on. Craig Wesco doesn't deserve that. His other teammate doesn't deserve that. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to be caught on a team that was cheating. I mean, the team was cheating because one of the members was cheating. They don't deserve that. And that could have been prevented if you had banned him at that time that on video that he was doing shady behavior that was intentional in my opinion. You don't have that. You don't have that future cheating. If you ban Alex for life when he first did something that was kind of shady and the two explorers, which was on camera, the Kiara, which was on camera, it took a ton of evidence to ban him the first time and you not, do not let him return, he doesn't cheat other people. He doesn't take advantage of other people. He doesn't win. He doesn't top eight GP Los Angeles. All, everything changes for everybody. And here's the, here's the bitter truth. Um, I had a worker, and her brother was, he was, uh, he's in jail. He did a plea deal, and he was a predator. He's not going to change. I've never met him. I don't know who he is. I've only 
heard the descriptions about him from my secretary. But the amount of people who came out as soon as he went to jail was tremendous. Like it was at least three dozen people came out and said that he tried the same thing with them. It's sad. You know, it's sad. The only reason he got caught was the, the, the victim who was 15 or under at the time, her dad caught them. He drove, she went to his parents' home because he's like 25 and he stays at home with his parents. You know, really cool guy, right? With a 14, 15 year old, does the act, drives her to Walmart before school, before she goes to uh, freshman year of high school, gets her plan B, and that's how he gets caught. Buying the plan B for a, 15, uh, for a minor. I think she was 14 at the time. Blanking insane. Do you think these animals can change? Do you think someone can change? <laughs> Unless they have a life-changing event, such as maybe going to jail, finding God. I truly believe people can find God. A spiritual event of some type. The only thing that changes is your circumstances, your characteristics, your traits. For I'm 31. 31 years of experience, bias, I would even say discrimination. Not me discriminating against, obviously I'm a minority. Has shaped me to be what I am today. So for you to ask me to change the stripes on my back, good luck. Good luck. <laughs>